about Marvel? How'd you guess? Just lucky, I suppose. Well, let's do it. Frank okay. Or me worked at Funny Zinc, man, what an awesome guy. He wanted Martin Goodman to make comics on the side. Goodman published magazines, they were all about sci-fi. So he started Timely Publications in 1939. Timely turned to Atlas, which turned into Marvel. I know it's pronounced Marvel, but who cares? Oh well. What started out with Submariner and the Human Torch became 5,000 characters with comic books galore. In 1941, we got involved in World War II. You know Captain America, who wore red, white, and blue. Well, in his comic books, he fought the Nazis in style. So the comics that included him were selling by the pile. Aw, oh, young Marvel. Yo, each Captain America issue sold a million copies Cause the comics would show him fighting Nazis And you know that this was good For timely publications selling comics with swag All across the nation more swag than this rap Yeah, you know my man Cap On the cover of the first comic he gave Hitler a slap He was a big success Lasted over 60 years Then at one point he died leaving the comic fans in tears yeah, and then he was reborn because his partner took his costume. Sing with me. I love Spider-Man and I hate Superman. Marvel's better than DC. Joe Schuster is no Stanley. I'd rather have a fantastic four to protect me than a rich dude with no powers from Gotham City. So what happens next, Will? In 1951, Goodman abandoned cable news. He took it on himself instead so he could distribute. His network was called Atlas, but don't be mistook. The name was not adopted by the publishers, but it was still on all the books. I guess informally they were Atlas for a while. Like in 1960 when the first Hulk came in style. It's not the Hulk, you know, that one came in 62. And in 1961, Fantastic Four came into view. 1962 was when Spider-Man appeared. In Amazing Fantasy 15, he was something to be feared. But without the suit, he was just a normal kid. Jack Kirby didn't draw him good, Steve Ditko did the trick. Thor also started in the year of 62. I I'm doing it! I'm doing it! You're not doing it right here, let me try. <clears throat> Dude, you're not even hitting the table. I guess that was a good yeah. year for them and me and you. The next year came Iron Man, the Avengers, and X-Men. And when it came to May. May, they called it Marvel to the end. In 1969, there was a guy named the Falcon. It was Matt Porton, he was black American. Of course this was a breakthrough for the trying times. Cause blacks in America were just getting civil rights. Dear Stanley, I know you don't know me, but I sure know you. One December night in 1922, you were born, and the course of history changed forever. You have left an imprint in my heart. The way you helped create all the most memorable comic book heroes, Spider-Man, the Hulk, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Thor, the Avengers, and even the first black American hero, the Falcon, never ceases to amaze me. All that, and you wrote many of the comics. As if that's not enough, you were editor-in-chief, publisher, art director, and even president. You are the biggest name in comics. Even though you have done work for DC Comics, I still love you more than you could imagine. The way you make cameo appearances in Marvel movies makes me cry of pure joy. Well, this is about all the time that I have, and I pray that one day you hear this. But regardless, I'm glad you've stayed an influential figure in comics. 
And though you've been involved with several other companies and lawsuits, your name is a staple forever in Marvel's history. You're my hero, Stan. I love Spider-Man and I hate Superman. Marvel's better than DC. Joe Schuster is no Stanley. I'd rather have a Fantastic Four to protect me than a rich dude with no powers from Gotham City. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then came the seventies, and Marvel started to diversify. Uh, yeah, hi. Other genres came about like horror, martial arts, and sci-fi. Then the 80s came, I'll admit, Marvel knew nothing for sure. But then they started selling their comics to a growing base of comic book stores. The dependents showed when they started making titles only for the shops. TV shows and movies were made based on the comics more often than not. Marvel grew and grew and in the 90s it was at its peak. Although of course their products are a want and not a need Yo, I'm back Some popular artists were Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, and Rob Leefield SHUT UP! In the 2000s they were bouncing back from almost bankruptcy more stories were adapted for the silver screen and halfway through they started civil war putting their characters at battle two sides were formed they made more movies with actors spider-man was revamped by steven wacker in 2009 disney bought the corporation but no characters would change what a relief across the nation more than comics marvel has three parts one is for comics, one for visual arts. The third's to license characters to other companies so that kids can wear X-Men t-shirts with ease. Marvel make that green, the annual assets. It's 937 milli and it sounds like they are all set. Ethics should be good, movies and books are made here, but they license to others so you never know the real deal. That was very nice, man. I enjoyed it a lot. Thanks. I love Spider-Man and I hate Superman. Marvel's better than DC. Joe Schuster is so Stanley. I'd rather have a Fantastic Four to protect me than a rich dude with no powers from Gotham City. Yeah. Getting so high, I can see those telltale signs 